In this video, we will solve the system of three equations with three unknowns using an augmented matrix by writing the matrix in reduced row echelon form using the TI-84 graphing calculator. We are told if the system has an infinite number of solutions to express the solutions in terms of the parameter t, where z is equal to t. A system of three equations with three unknowns will always have a three by four augmented matrix. Where the equations must be in standard form, meaning the x, y, and z terms are on the left side and the constants are on the right. In the augmented matrix, the coefficients of x are in column one, the coefficients of y are in column two, the coefficients of z are in column three, and the constants are always in column four. So going back to our example, looking at the first equation, because the coefficient of x is one, the coefficient of y is negative one, the coefficient of z is one, and the constant is negative eight, the first row of the augmented matrix is one, negative one, one, negative eight. In the second equation, the coefficient of x is negative three, the coefficient of y is negative four, the coefficient of z is 11, and the constant is negative four, giving us the second row of negative three, negative four, 11, negative four. And for the third equation, the coefficient of x is negative three, the coefficient of y is one, the coefficient of z is one, and the constant is 16, giving us the third row of negative three, one, one, 16. The next step is to enter the matrix in the TI-84. To do this, we press second, x to the power of negative one for the matrix menu, right arrow twice to edit. And let's enter the matrix in matrix A, so we press enter. We enter the dimensions, which is three by four, three, enter, four, enter, and now we enter the elements. After every entry, we press enter. So we press one, enter, negative one, enter, and so on. It is important to double check the entries, and for the negative values, it's important to use the negative sign, not the minus sign, otherwise, you will receive an error. And now we go back to the home screen by pressing second mode for quit. Back to the matrix menu by pressing second, x to the power of negative one, right arrow once to math, up five times for RREF for reduced row echelon form, which is here, enter. Go back and select matrix A, so second, x to the power of negative one, matrix A is already highlighted, so we press enter. Right parenthesis and enter. And now we have the matrix in reduced row echelon form. Let's record this on the screen. Remember the coefficients of x are in column one, the coefficients of y are in column two, the coefficients of z are in column three, and the constants are in column four. Notice in the third row we have a row of zeros, which indicates that zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero, which gives us the equation zero equals zero. Zero equals zero is always true, and whenever this happens, where we get a row of zeros, this indicates we have an infinite number of solutions, which means the system is consistent and dependent. So sometimes we're just told to state we have infinite solutions. Other times we're told to express x, y, and z in terms of a new variable, in this case the parameter t, where t is any real number. To do this, let's write the equivalent equations for row one and row two. Row one indicates that one x plus zero y minus one z equals negative four, or x minus z equals negative four, and the second row indicates that zero x plus one y minus two z equals four, or y minus two z equals four. Let's solve the first equation for x and the second equation for y. To solve for x, we add z to both sides, giving us x equals z minus four. Solving for y here, we add two z to both sides, which gives us y is equal to two z plus four. And notice how we don't have an equation for z. We could say z is equal to any real number z, but again, we're told to let z equal t, so if we let z equal t, 
we can now express both x and y in terms of t, where x is equal to t minus four, and y is equal to two t plus four. This is another way to express that we have an infinite number of solutions, where again, t is any real number. So again, sometimes we're just told to state we have infinite solutions. Other times, we're told to express the solutions in terms of a new variable, in this case, t, and therefore, we would express the solutions in this form here. And sometimes, we're actually asked to express x and y just in terms of z, which we did here. If that was the case, we would just use these equations here. I hope you found this helpful.